Hello and welcome to the NevilleResearch.com video. So today I'd like to talk about Sonnet 66 and compare it with a, two letters that Henry Neville wrote. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is some kind of proof that Henry Neville wrote Sonnet 66, but it is important to go through the sonnets one by one, compare it with Henry Neville's experiences what he's written, and other aspects of his life, and see if there is a connection. And that's just a question that we need to explore step by step, and Sonnet 66 is particularly interesting in this respect. Now, this sonnet is incredibly pessimistic, and we looked at another very pessimistic sonnet, Sonnet 121, in a previous video, but this one is really over the top. Uh, the first line is, Tired with all these, for restful death I cry. So essentially, you know, the author is, um, you know, hoping for death, for restful death, where he can find some peace. And um, the sentiment is repeated at the end of the sonnet. Um you know, from these would I be gone, uh, save that to die, I leave my love alone. So he'd like to be, die, but doesn't want to die because he would leave his love behind. And then we have a list of all the painful aspects of life. And a few of these are particularly interesting. Um... And right perfection wrongfully disgraced. Well, Henry Neville was imprisoned for the Essex Rebellion. He felt that he was um, being treated unfairly, especially because he didn't participate in the rebellion. So this could be connected to that. Uh, and strength by limping sway disabled. Um, you know, Henry Neville did, in fact have some disability with his legs. He writes about this in his letters and other people mention it in their letters. So he had some disability in his legs, perhaps some difficulty walking. And here we go. This is a particularly interesting line. And art made tongue-tied by authority. So the author seems to be suggesting that their art is sort of limited by censorship or limited by... Uh, you know, a fear of offending authorities. So this is a super interesting line. Anyway, so the overall point of this sonnet is that death would be a release from the misery of life. And we have a letter here that Henry Neville wrote to Robert Cecil in August 1601. And it was written from the Tower of London. He was in prison for the Essex Rebellion. And he's making the exact same point here. Um, so I'm going to show you the, the part of the letter. The handwriting is right here. And you can, you can look at this. And then here's the, trans, the modern spelling transcription. And my mind is so prepared already for misery as nothing can be much more welcome to me than that which is the end of all misery. And... Um, this sort of phrase, end of all misery, is actually uh, taken from the Bible, and it's sort of a common phrase for death. So if you do a search on this phrase, other people refer to death as the end of all misery. So there's no question Henry Neville here is saying that he would welcome death to end his misery. So it's a very strong statement. He's writing to Robert Cecil asking for leniency, Ask for, asking to be released from the prison for the diminishment of his fine, you know, asking for his family so he can take care of his family. He's really in a desperate situation here. And the truth is, he didn't get anything. He, he was in prison for um, almost two more years from the time he wrote this letter. And he only was released when Queen Elizabeth died. So this is a very, this is, a desperate time in his life, he's writing this. And then August 4th, 1601, we have a very similar sentiment. He says, 
I shall account my life but a burden unto me and hope to be eased of it ere it be long. So he's saying here that, um, you know, his life is a burden and he'd like to be, be rid of it. Uh, the specifics of this letter, he's saying that unless Queen Elizabeth will forgive him or, or be less harsh with him. But the point is, he's making the same sort of statement about his life being miserable, about it being a burden, about him wishing for death. So we have two letters that Henry Neville wrote specifically talking about him wishing for death, essentially. And if we look back to Sonnet 66, the exact same sentiment is expressed in this sonnet. Now, like I said, I'm not saying this is proof that Henry Neville wrote the works of Shakespeare, but there are a lot of aspects of the sonnets that do align very closely with Henry Neville's life, his experiences, and the specific things he wrote in his letters. So we're going to keep on exploring this issue going forward and be sure to click subscribe to the channel, click like, and we've been getting a lot of comments uh, on these videos and we love to see the comments. So please comment down below your views on Sonnet 66 and what you think about all this and just remain civil in your discussions with other viewers of the channel. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.